Technique, I wanted to start a little bit uh, with you and, uh, and Cedric because we, uh, we both met Cedric in the context of Cities on the Move and yeah. Juan Ru and I uh, did Cities on the Move and we worked on this exhibition about Asian cities and uh, actually after Dan Graham having told me for years about Cedric Price, Richard Hamilton and Rita Dona said, you know, now it's really the time to organize a meeting with Cedric because you cannot work about Asian cities and not take Cedric into account. And then this great adventure with him started with many different, you know, uh, exhibitions and projects we did together. Uh, and during the process of Cities on the Move, you, Dominic, and Cedric, you know, became quite close and there was a dialogue. So maybe we can start with that. And if you tell us a little bit about what Cedric means for you and, and, and how you met him. Well, I remember we went to, was it Helsinki? We went to Helsinki together where uh, Cedric was giving a lecture. And I have a very fond memory of him wearing a black uh, sweater, wool sweater over his very elegant shirt, and with some, uh, I think with some um, the badge. Badge, yeah. yeah. Well, and I don't remember what was on, but uh, I, I remember that he's, uh, I, filmed the, I filmed the lecture, and I've been uh, looking for this tape since years, but it seems to be unfortunately lost. But I remember an incredibly vivid uh, talk that uh, stayed in my memory till now and I think is one of the bases for trying to do something that is very alive, no, here. And also, actually this lecture, I also filmed it, but on my camera the sound was off that day, so it was, <laughs> it's a lost lecture really. And I remember also that actually the slides somehow turned over and then he arranged them random buys or something. It was the age of the slideshows. And when, uh, when Hans Urich started talking about what could possibly happen here, I had a strange dream which was to replicate um, um, Cedric's wool uh, uh, jumper because it, 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 it was a micro-architecture in itself and it would have been wonderful to, uh, to be housed inside in a way and to experience his body from uh, inside. Now, that idea came actually up in this meeting, you know, we were discussing earlier with Jacques Herzog in the herzog Demeron office, where both of you were present, and it's really in that meeting that we made the show here, because it was basically the idea of these two archives, and you both engaged very much also, of course, Tino and Assad and, and, and Jacques and Pierre about this idea to make a choreography. Uh, so maybe, Philip, you can tell us a little bit about this and, and, and how the idea of the blinds came up. Uh, I think it came from, um, of, uh, I, think, I think I sent you an email about making something anima animated, I think, and you misunderstood me. I thought thinking, you do an animation. Yeah, yeah, we'll make an animation. <laughs> I say, no, I want to animate something in the space. And, um, but I didn't know what. And uh, came the idea of the blind, which is something I used already in the past. Uh, which is that because from here I can see now the lights changing inside the space. And it creates sort of a momentum, you know, and a vibration or a breathing. And, uh, and especially because, you know, it's now extremely sunny and, uh, and the pavilion is like made of glass, as uh, Dorothy explained. Exhibition is all about like, you know, it's also a display of light. And, uh, and the fact we can play with light uh, creates like some momentum when things can happen. But when I came, I was surprised to see the chairs which now disappear that uh, Tino displayed with a little, uh, with a little um, uh, a piece of archive that you can sit and look at, which was fantastic. So a lot of things also, when I came today, was a surprise, was a surprise for me because I didn't see them or that we never, would never discuss them. Which is back to what I'm saying, I was saying before, it's also what friendship is all about, you know? Uh, you can also take decisions without having to discuss all the process. So one thing leads to another. And, uh, and I believe in that. That's also in, a, in, a, in, a, in another way to talk about dramaturgy, you know? One thing leading to another. And also, I mean, this whole idea of a dramaturgy of exhibition, I mean, it was really the first show we worked on together, which was your show at Musée d'Art Moderne de la Ville de Paris, where you had the collaboration with Jaron Lanier. Yeah. And I always have the feeling that this type of shows yeah. we are doing now and we are discussing here, it sort of had a lot to do with that exhibition. And when the cuttlefish popped up, something got activated. And can yeah. you tell us about that? That was a, a show in 90-something. Uh, and 91. Uh, 91? Yeah. 99. Nin yeah. And, uh, and I worked with, I asked, uh, I asked uh, Jaron Lanier, which was... Uh, 
with uh, the, 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 the person who coined and invented the virtual re realities, uh, metaphor and systems. That was for my generation extremely important. And uh, I asked him to uh, be my, not a creator, because Hans was the creator, but to uh, assist me in a way, you know. And, um, and we spent time talking about the show, and I spent time talking about the show, and uh, came with this idea of uh, having, a lot of ideas came out, but uh, one of the last ones that, came, that we, I get, we get to realize what uh, each time an event will, will happen in the show is a light will be switched on or off, or a film will be screened, a cuttlefish will appear on the, on the screen. And uh, so that, that, from that time, I was fascinated by this idea of uh, synchronicity and, uh, and the opposite, you know, to have uh, diachronicity. So when things get to be in sync, and, uh, and it seems to be strange and, and quite uncanny that uh, things are there and not there, you know? And uh, so I guess the term choreography, which came recently, uh, into a, into a mouth, because before we'd never used it, uh, maybe sum it up, you know, but... Uh... Yeah, I think we could almost introduce the word uh, timography. Yeah. Like, I remember very well uh, that uh, what was great in this exhibition was that you would arrive in front of something that would have its own time, and that goes completely against the question some audience has sometimes, how long should I stay in front of this work? which is a kind of basic uh, thinking, like what, what, do I live, do I stay, do I go? And this was playing with that because mm -hmm. you introduced so many different uh, sequences and a yeah, real timeography that makes the exploration of the space completely different. Like you cannot see anymore an exhibition like a kind of uh, one-time space rather more an editing of many yeah, spaces. times and spaces. Uh, and this timeography idea, I mean, it's great because we finally have the neologism. We were looking, and Cedric always said, you know, we should find neologisms. He, uh, he said that we should actually stop using the word city. We should come up with a new word for the word city. And new words are fundamental. Exactly, and so here and you... And promenadology, promenadology is one of the most effective concepts, you know, of, of now, I think. And this idea of uh, the... Uh, uh, th timography obviously plays a, an important role also for you and I mean both of you when we talked about this idea of choreography of times of exhibition and I always would mention obsessively the fan palace and you both always told me about experiments in the 60s in Grenoble you told me also about Polieri so maybe it's interesting to evoke that a little bit because there are these different histories of it and we talk a lot here about Cedric but it could be great to hear about these other you know historical precedents um, the um the uh, Grenoble was, uh, it's funny to come to Venice to talk about that, we, we grew up in Grenoble with Dominique and Grenoble was at the time, back in the 70s and 80s, an open city, so a lot of political refugees will come and a lot of conversation will happen. And at the time, there was a place which was important for us as kids uh, called uh, Maison La Maison, like the House of Culture. Then of course it had been renamed back in the 90s into the Cargo, because it sounds like kind of better. But the, the, the name was, the original name was the House of Culture. And the House of Culture was a place where people would come and either, you know, enjoy a ballet or, you know, but also we negotiate the appearance of forms. And I think for me, an exhibition is all about that, is how can you negotiate the appearance and the, 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 the disappearance of a form. And the House of Culture in Grenoble was all about that. You know, we will have lectures, but also dance, and, it, and also a lot of conversation. And, uh, and quite political ones. I remember the Maison de la Culture in Grenoble is the, the place where I saw John Cage uh, frying mushrooms. And when you think of Grenoble being a small city in France, it's quite interesting that. But it also had a Théâtre Mobile, which was designed by, by Collier. Yeah. And uh, the Théâtre Mobile had a rotating, it was not the, well, had a completely, could rotate completely and brings us to a, totally different perception of scenography. Today, uh, Philippe was showing me pictures of this great scenographer, and I think scenography is something we have to merge with our relation to exhibition. So in this sense, uh, we can learn from Polieri, and that's another, I mean, protest against forgetting, because this is amazing. We need Polieri. We need Polieri. A very last question. Philip told us about about the, about the blinds. Dominique, can you tell us about the neon, which is the new 
the new neon of the entrance of the, of the Swiss pavilion for Lucius and, and Cedric? Well, the neon has a very, I don't know if you know the book, uh, which is for children by Leo Leoni, Little Blue and Little Yellow. And I mean, most of us have seen this book and maybe you remember this very basic encounter between two beings that are just colors. And uh, it was to try to, to, give a, to give a feeling of something as basic as that. So yellow meeting blue, meaning green, and going back to the first names, Lucius and Cedric, to bring something uh, closer. Uh, maybe a very last question. Um, we you know, discussed earlier with Alessandro Bava that maybe the Fan Palace is happening now on the internet. Uh, what do you think in terms of uh, you know, a real Fan Palace? What's this kind of necessary institution for a 21st century? Do you think the Fan Palace, this idea of flexibility, this idea of an institution which could change all the time, where all the disciplines would meet, I mean, it still, it still has never been built. How would you imagine such an institution? I'm not, I'm not sure it has to be built. You know, that the beauty, I mean, to... to, to uh, I like this notion of the Derrida notion of ontology. You know, I think we've been haunted yeah. by, this, uh, by this idea of the fun palace. And uh, so it's everywhere and nowhere, you know. Yeah. And I think it's part of my practice and it's part of Dominic's practice, it's part of Tino's practice, part of a lot of this... Uh, of artist practice, and it doesn't have to be there to exist, you know? Yeah. That could not be a better conclusion. Dominique and Philippe, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.